you guys out there this evening to uh, our Bible study. This is our midweek service and uh, just one service. We have service all the time in here. Uh, God bless you guys and thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, and we pray that whatever is spoken and said, done in this house, uh, that there's always a presentation of the Lord Jesus Christ directed toward you so that you might have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. See, whenever Jesus did anything, all right, people always had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Whether it was him teaching or healing or casting out devils, whatever he did, confrontation, it was always meeting Jesus and then having an encounter with the Holy Spirit. So we pray that tonight through the Word of God, who is Jesus, that you also will receive your particular favorite encounter with the Holy Spirit. So you might just get healed tonight or delivered or whatever. It depends on how you perceive the Lord God and how you receive him. Amen. So we pray God's blessing speed on you, we call it spiritual acceleration, and God's wonderful favor on you, which we're going to be talking about tonight. Amen? Amen. God bless you. All right, so you guys give the Lord praise and take your seats and shout or whatever you got to do. Amen. Tonight we're going to get into a topic that's very important for us in this time. Uh, it's very important for you to know how God operates, and so we're going to be talking tonight about favor that brings recognition, all right? Favor that brings recognition. This is not just ordinary favor, all right? This is favor that's listed through the Bible from the book of Genesis all the way through that gives us a privilege and, I would say, a divine opportunity to have a revelation of the Lord God and how he does things uh, in us and through us, around us, uh, so that others might recognize certain things about us and then give us what we call double favor, added favor, all right? And so I don't know, maybe you guys don't need this tonight. Y'all look like y'all, look like y'all need some sweaters or something like y'all cold or something. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody needs favor. It doesn't matter who it is or uh, where you come from. Uh, the sad thing is that everybody doesn't receive favor, even though it's available, okay? So we're going to go to the book of Daniel real quick. Uh, Daniel chapter 2, please come with me. And for those, again, uh, those of you globally that are joining us or watching us or uh, in this country, wherever you might be, uh, we want you to really understand how important this is, especially in these times uh, when you see uh, fret not thyself because of evildoers. <laughs> All, right. All right, fret not thyself because of evildoers. When you see that going on, okay, around you, okay, because some people do fret because of things that go on. But you and I are born again believers, and as ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ in the earth and in this country, we work under the label of the kingdom of Almighty God. We are not uh, scrutinized by, uh, you know, because we live under the whatever, whatever, whatever our particular countries. We call it constitutions, okay? Constitutions are great, but we also have a constitution of the kingdom, okay? And so because we live under that constitution, sometimes, guess what? You can think that that constitution is not uh, favoring you, okay, because of circumstances. Well, I want to clear you up tonight. And uh, Mr. Clean is going to come into your house. Uh, you need to know that no matter where you are as a believer, you belong to the Lord. And even though men may be in leadership positions, God is still on the throne. You need to understand that always. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So in Daniel chapter 2, we're going to look at this, and then we're going to get into some things uh, about, about favor. Now, this is the favor that we're talking about tonight. This is not just somebody... Uh, giving you something because they like you or whatever. I'm going to give you a definition of favor. This is what the Lord shared with me, and then we're going to get into the book of Daniel, all right? This is favor, all right? It's an attitude of approval. It's an attitude of approval, all right? Which means that it's a gift from that person, that individual. It's a gift to you. It's an attitude of approval. If I gave you, uh, say I walked up to you tonight and gave you a million dollars, all right? I got three people that want it, all right? <laughs> So if I walked up to you tonight and gave you a million dollars, okay? Well, before I gave you that million dollars, there has to be an approval in me, all right? Not you per se, but in me. I have to have an approval in me, okay, to give you that. So it's an attitude of approval, okay, that God has for us, and you need to know that. Some people come to church, and they go to church, and they've been in church all their life, but they still, when it comes down to coming boldly to God, they do not have this knowledge and understanding that God is for you, okay? And so you really need to hold on to that, all right? All right? 
Uh, whoever that is, please leave the door open. Okay. All right. So we get into this attitude of approval, all right, which now produces an act of kindness beyond what may be due. Okay. This attitude of approval now gets into an act, performs an act of kindness that's, again, maybe beyond, all right, maybe what you did or maybe what, you know, you felt about yourself. Because a lot of times, again, as I was saying, we fall short when we think that, you know, God's way out there and we over here and we need him, but he ain't showing up. Well, God's doing things, and I can tell you this, I, I noticed about him over these last 30 some years of working with him. I can tell you when you don't see something, something's going on. Now, when you see something, it's the manifestation that you want. But when you don't see things going on, God's working. See, God's working, see. And if you could see him working, you would, you'd shut your heart up and say, be quiet. <laughs> All right? Now, again, faith is an attitude of approval, okay? It's an act of kindness beyond what may be due, okay? Maybe you do work good and you did this, whatever. But this is the thing that you need to know about this kind of approval, okay? It's providing an advantage for you. Providing an advantage, all right? And you should know what an advantage is. You go on your job, whatever, and, you know, instead of you having to sit over there or park way over there, they park you at the front door, they sit you up there where the CEO is, you get an advantage. Well, that advantage now is bringing you what? Recognition, all right? And these are the things that we're going to be looking at in the Word tonight, okay? How God's favor, okay, brings recognition to us, okay? Somebody's going to recognize, listen, hey, boy, we need to get involved with that person. Or we need to let them handle our business in this area, you know, because they're this and they're that, whatever. God's favor does that, okay? So in the book of Daniel, here we go. Y'all go with me tonight? All right. Now, I know you guys out there with me, uh, you know, because uh, we understand where you're coming from and where you are and all those things. And, you know, your church is in your home, uh, wherever you are, you know, wherever you are, <laughs> you know, at your ministries that you're working. We know and understand you're taking in this word of God. And we pray that everything that comes on this house, as far as God's, whatever we're speaking about, we're talking about healing. We want that healing to be in your, in your places. We're talking about favor tonight. We desire for that favor to be in your homes in your businesses and wherever you are personally, all right, because you're connected to us. And in that connection, it simply means that there's an alignment. Jesus is the cornerstone. And because these two walls are coming together, we meet in him. And in him, guess what? We live, move, and have our being. Amen? So we get into the book of Daniel, all right? Daniel chapter 2. Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream. And he's dreamed a certain function, a certain statue, a certain stuff that's going on around him, all right? And he's going to, because he's, you know, if you ever read or study about Nebuchadnezzar, you know that he was not a godly person. He didn't walk around and say, by faith, I'm doing this. He'd walk around and hang you with a rope or, you know, have you, you know, your head cut off or whatever. He was not, he was not that person who was, you know, all kosher with, you know, just living right. He had his own way of living. You know? But yet God raised him up. And these are the things that people do not fully understand about these days that God raises up people for his purposes. And they may not be or address or present themselves the way you would want them to present themselves or dress themselves, but he does raise them up that way because he has a purpose that only that particular type of person is going to accomplish. You know, I'll tell you in a minute, if you had to go to court for something, you know, and something happened in your life and you know, and you gotta go to court and you need a lawyer, uh, you know, I, I'm, 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 all, I'm all for Christian living but I'd have to find me a Perry Mason. <laughs> I'm just telling you, because the Perry Mason is not gonna get up there and be all, you know, whatever. I love nice, nice Christian people working and whatever, but you know something, but when it comes down to uh, your livelihood, you're gonna need somebody that's gonna say, you know, uh, if you got a phone, you got a lawyer. <laughs> you, you guys know what I'm talking about? That's what you're gonna need, all right? <laughs> all right, and Daniel, all right, in chapter two, Nebuchadnezzar, because he's, he's running everything, you know, and he's got all these wise men, he's dreamed the dream, and he wants them to tell him the dream and the interpretation. None of them can do it. So he's ordering that all the wise men be killed, that every one of them, you're going to die because you're not serving my purpose. 
They, they, they were in position for his purpose, not their purpose, all right? And so uh, you can learn something from that. Don't hire anybody that you can't fire, all right? So, <laughs> so, so I'm telling you, all right? So when, when Daniel hears this, okay, Daniel goes into him, into his office, and he asks the king, and this is in, in, uh, in, in uh, chapter 2, all right? Here's Daniel going in, verse 16, all right? Because Daniel doesn't want to die, and he don't want all these people to die because there's something that is revealed, but it's not known, okay? And, he, and I, I think he probably read what uh, Moses wrote. The secret things belong unto God, Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and our children. And so if you know the word of God, you can always ask God to work on that particular word that you know so that the Lord can help you in that situation. So Daniel goes into the king, and he says this. Then Daniel went in, and he desired of the king that he would give him time, that he would show the king the interpretation. So he's asking the king for, listen, sow some favor here, all right? If you sow some favor, you can, get, you can get an answer, all right? Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known unto Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all right, and uh, that they would desire the mercies of God and that they would pray and whatever. And the thing was revealed to Daniel at night, verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision, all right? God didn't come down and write it out for him. He showed him in a night vision. This is why it's so important to keep yourself clear and to keep yourself clean so that God can show you things when your body is not focused on do, 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 do. Are you guys with me? Amen. All right. And so when your body's at rest, God has an opportunity to show you things that's beyond uh, your uh, comprehension when you are, you've got all these hats that you're wearing, okay, every day. Y'all with me? Y'all know many hats you wear? Some of you wear too many hats, do you not? Yeah. Come on, talk, talk to me tonight. Yeah. All right. All right. So Daniel goes in. Daniel gets the interpretation from the Lord in the dream, and he comes back, and uh, we go into verse uh, 40. Let's go to verse 47 to save some time. And he comes in, and he tells the king the whole thing. He says, this is the interpretation. This is the dream, and this is the interpretation, all right? And we don't want to get into all that because it's a lot. Uh, and so Daniel shows him what God has shown him, okay? And we get into verse uh, 46. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar fell, fell on his face, and worship Daniel, all right? What is he doing? This is recognition. He's recognizing that Daniel is favored of God. Right? Now, this is, this is the one who wanted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to worship him. Now, he falls on his face before Daniel, okay? It says, he fell on his face and worshiped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors, odors unto him. Then the king answered, Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing that thou hast, thou couldst reveal the secret. Then the king made Daniel, who? A great man. Gave him what? Many gifts, great gifts. Made him rule over the whole providence of Babylon and the chief <laughs> of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. And this is why when we talk about uh, the, 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 the birth of Jesus, that these wise men came looking for Jesus is because we believe that through history, Daniel taught them about the prophetic words of the Messiah coming. And so these wise men came out of the east to see this king because they saw the sign that Daniel had shared with them because Daniel was a person, again, who could get interpretations of things from God. Are y'all with me tonight? All right, okay. So we see that this God gave Daniel favor to, to reveal this dream and the interpretation to the king. And in return, the king gave Daniel recognition and gave him more favor. Lifted him up. Put him on a pedestal, per se. And this is what I'm sharing with you guys tonight. That if you get into understanding what this type of favor is, not just somebody giving you a favor, helping you out or whatever, but this type of favor where God is involved in it, then God is going to help people recognize that there's something very different about you, that now they will be drawn to you. See, because if a person, if their heart knows something that is different about you and they're drawn to you, you're going to find that that person is going to bring everything into your life that you were missing 
Because God always brings a person into your life when he wants to bless you. You're going to find that out. Anybody in here tonight? You think you need some more people in your life that can bless you? <laughs> oh, I got two. Can I get three? How about four? How about five? How about five? Can I get five? All right. All right. So we're going to sell this tonight. Favor. All right. That brings recognition. So I want you to write this down because these are the things that, that were shared with me. And so I want to share these things with you uh, because I haven't taught on favor in a long time. Uh, but favor is something that's very important uh, that you need to know these things about. Okay. This is not just a random thing that drops on you. It is a gift, but it's a gift with an attitude. Okay. If, I, if I'd give you again a million dollars, said everybody meet me at the bank tomorrow morning, all of you would be there before I got there. You know, sunrise, you guys would be pulling in the bank, finding you a parking spot up next to the door so that guess what, you could get up there so that you could be the first one that's recognized as number one. So you're the first one going to get your check, right? That's what you would do, all right? So what is that called? It's called pursuit, all right? It's called pursuit, okay? So write this down. Faith does not go. The Lord shared this with me, nor does it seek out those that need it. Does not do that. Faith does not go, no, you know, go to someone, nor does it seek out those who need it. All right? Y'all got your shorthand going real fast tonight? All right, double up, spiritual. But it reveals itself to those who value it. It reveals itself to those who value it. Okay, See, Daniel, unlike all the other wise men, what did he do? The other wise men were preparing to die or preparing somewhere to escape Babylon. <laughs> Daniel went to the king. He sought favor. All right? He went to the king. He sought favor. He pursued it. Okay? See, and this is what I'm telling you. If you value something, you'll pursue it. See, if I value something. See, if when I say value something, I'm simply saying that that is something of the most importance to me, all right? When you pursued your spouses, you know, everybody else became less important to you. Even in some cases, mama and daddy. <laughs> daddy, I gotta go. Where you going? Where you going, boy? I, I gotta go right now. I'll see you when I get back. <laughs> see, see, that, that thing becomes, whatever's valued, it becomes an importance to your mind. You think about it, you dwell on it, you try to figure out ways to, to approach it or, or make it happen in your life. And this is how it has to be with favor because everybody needs favor, but everybody don't get it, all right? Only people that pursue favor, okay? And so Daniel pursued favor. You've got to pursue favor, all right? Even when it comes to, with the Lord. If there are certain things that you're fighting and you're going against or things are coming against you because you don't really have to go against anything because you're the victor. But everything comes against you to steal your, uh, your opportunities or your focus, you know, or to come to tempt your life. And as I've told you guys before, you can't be tempted by something that you don't focus on, okay? So when things are coming at you, then you need to go to God in persistence and ask God for a favor for that particular thing, either to be uh, eradicated or, you know, some way it has to go, some way it has to be uh, shut up, some way it has to be cut off. Uh, and, and if you don't do that, then you're going to struggle by your own uh, potential when you have the availability of God's potential at hand every day. All you got to do is say, Jesus. All you got to do is declare what he said for you to declare over that situation. What am I doing? I am appropriating God's availability and his potential for, for victory in that area that I may not have enough faith to get through this thing, Okay. Hunt somebody say, I think he's talking to you tonight. All right. Now you can hunt somebody else and say, yeah, he's definitely talking to you too. All right. <laughs> All right. Because, because people need to know that favor is not something that just fall on you. I pursue it. All right. So if I pursue something, then God understands that, okay, if I'm pursuing something, as Jesus said, acts in my name. Okay. Even in the book of James, he tells us to pursue certain things. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Make sure that you have a stable mind when you're going after things. We see how David was about things with the Lord in the book of Psalms. And we may look at some of that because he's one of my favorite characters because he's a pattern in the natural of Jesus in the spiritual, all right? And so you, you see that if I pursue these particular things, as I used to tell you guys years ago, 
when I first found out about these particular things, you know, my wife was working for the judge down in Richmond. I was still working in, in the Southland Corporation, and I was coming out of it because I knew I was leaving because I was going to my own business. But I used to give the, the supervisors a card, and I'd send it up there and put it in what you call that box and whatever, and I'd just thank them. It would just be a big thank you note. Thank you for allowing my gifts to work here, to grow here, or whatever. Well, see, I, I wasn't really trying to get somewhere else because they'd already tried to promote me into the supervision place there with guys that had started right before I started work there. But I never wanted to take work home. I don't take my work home. And they used to try to get me to do that. I would go like, nope. When I leave here on Friday mornings, Chastine Rock is going home. Chastine Rock gonna go do what he wanna do with his family or whatever. If I wanna lay down all day, I'm gonna lay down all day. Nobody's gonna be calling me telling me you need to come to work. This day. No, 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 that was, that was just my attitude. Now yours might be different, but that was mine. And so they kept on and that, those cards caused the plant manager, the assistant plant manager to come down to me one night and, and walk up and give me the privilege of, guess what, going up and putting another, uh, a whole warehouse in order and stuff and, and setting things straight so that that company could constantly progress and grow. Well, see, I wasn't in giving the card for that. I just gave the card because I understand that favor, when you give, when you give people and you thank people for what they're doing for you, that God gets in it and he works to promote you in certain things that you need in life. It wasn't anything on work that I needed, but I got something wonderful, because I can tell you right now, the last five years that I was there, I was like, you know, a rat eating cheese all day long. <laughs> I was getting fat, I was studying the word, I'd read, you know, three or four hours a night, I had my books there, I would read and study, you know, all these particular guys that I was interested in and what they wrote and stuff, it was just like seminary, sem sem seminary, not cemetery, seminary school. <laughs> All right, that I was going through. So we find that favor is most important. You have, to, you have to pursue it. Now write this down also. Why do I necessarily, because somebody's out there will always ask that question. There's always a why. Why do I necessarily need to desire favor? Okay? Somebody's going to always ask that question. I don't care what you talk about. Somebody's going to always say why. You know, you talk about prosperity. Well, why do I need more than, more than all of that? I don't need, I, you know, I got a great job on doing this. What about all the people that don't have a great job that you could help? What about getting to a level where what you give away is what you used to make all year? Are you guys with me? I'm just, I'm just saying. So, so we, we get in there because we, we don't want to pursue more prosperity because we get comfortable and we live a mediocre life based on my own selfishness and my own self-righteousness. And we don't think about that you really are your brother's keeper. See, because again, if I come in and I say, I'm gonna give you guys a million dollars. Well, if I said that I'm gonna give everybody in here a million dollars, I have to have more than enough to last me after you withdraw from my bank account. Are you guys with me? <laughs> All right, and so you guys got very blessed by your million. All right, but what are you gonna do with that million? You know? You know, here it comes back down to the, the way we think about things, all right? Because what you think about, how you think is the way you're going to live, all right? So why do I need it? Because favor helps you succeed more quickly. Favor helps you succeed faster than you would normally by yourself, okay? And you guys, again, I haven't taught this in a good while, but it, it bears a great grace and truth that you guys tonight that if I walked in tonight or met you at the bank tomorrow morning and gave every one of you a million dollars, would it help you become successful quicker? <laughs> yes, it would. You'd pay off your house, your mortgage, you'd do this, you'd buy, you'd do something, whatever. It would help you succeed faster in life, see? And this is what I'm saying. You need favor for that. And favor, again, the progressive favor, directly or indirectly. We can use that always to to expect it to come this way or from that way or this way or that way. And many scriptures direct us to gaining this favor or pursuing this favor so that we might be recognized by other people that God is in love with us. Now you can tell your neighbor he definitely loves you, all right? So I can see that he definitely loves you, all right? So it helps you not only to save the time and get there quicker, but it also helps you to get to a place where you get what you deserve. All right? 
because Jesus died for us to have things, all right? He became poor that we might become rich through his poverty. He died so that we might have things, okay? Certainly, we have eternal life. That's the greatest treasure that all of us could have, all right? But guess what? That treasure is only when we step through the door of death, all right, for us to fully enjoy. We can't fully enjoy that right now. Even though we are born again, you, when you got born again, you already signed over for eternal life, okay? But the fullness of that does not take place until we step through the door of death. Because right now, guess what? You're still suffering from the effects of this world. You still got to deal with death. You still got to deal with pain. You still got to deal with growing old. You still got to deal with cosmetics. <laughs> you still got to deal. You got still got to deal with hairdos. Come on, talk with me now. The nail shops, the dress shops. Come on, ladies, talk with me tonight. All right. You still got to deal with going to the grocery store. You still got to deal with a lot of things. Are in the shortages, or somebody else in charge of this, or somebody telling you no, you can't have this, or yes, you can have this, or you approve for that. Are you guys with me? But when we step into eternity, all that's fixed. All approval is already all approval. All right? So we'll never have to deal with those particular things again, okay? So it's most important that you have favor so that you can get the things that you desire, all right, that you desire. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Never be thy envious. All right. Now, pursuing favor, write this down. This is the third one. Then we're going to get into some scriptures here and show you guys some people that actually operated in all of this, okay? This is the third note that you need to write down. Pursuing favor with God and man qualifies you for favor. All right? Qualifies you for favor. Again, pursuing favor in God and man. Because remember Jesus, he says he grew in stature and favor with God and man. So pursuing favor with God and man, okay, it does great things for us. And this is one of the great things that you need to know. You do not have a spiritual right To receive anything, all right, unless you pursue it. You didn't get born again until you pursued it. There's no spiritual right for you to receive anything without pursuit, all right? Come on, go with me to John chapter 16. And this is why favor is so dynamic that everybody doesn't receive it. People need it all day long, everywhere. I know people. I pass by people that need it. You know, you see people going in the grocery store that need it. And you stand in the grocery store and somebody's standing there and they got particular items on to stand there. And then when that cash register costs, oh, ding, 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 and what do they do? They take this off and they say, well, I don't need this. this. I'll put this back or whatever. What is, what is that telling you? They need favor. You know, why, why are the medical centers filled up every day that now you used to could go there and walk right on in and sit down and they send you right on in but now you go in there and they send you back to your car and they say we'll call you <laughs> are you guys with me all right so the whole time you're in your car you're sitting there in pain you know and wondering how long is it going to take them to call me whatever and some people sit there for hours before they're called in all right that means that guess what you have to sit there and go through that ordeal sitting there in the car and then with your mind thinking on what's going on, which gives more pressure to the situation because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if I'm sitting there thinking about sickness, then guess what? I'm actually adding to the dilemma that I'm going through. Are you guys with me? All right, so you gotta, you gotta know that favor does a lot of things for us, okay? But I have to pursue it. I must pursue it. We go to John chapter 16. Let me get over here. I'm in John chapter six. Come on here. That's the rock. Get, 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 get. All right. Here we go. Verse 23. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Truly, truly, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Does that sound like, you know, some of the messages that I hear on grace, that God's done everything for us and we don't have to do anything? Jesus is telling us to pursue what you want. See, when I ask somebody for something, I have to humble myself, all right? I don't have to walk around and pry like, Jesus already did it all and I don't have to do anything and I'm just waiting for him to finish up what he's gonna do with me. Well, if he's already done it all, why don't you have what you need? See, spiritually he has 
the victory has been done. But he also told us to occupy. When you go to occupy a place in the military, what do you do? Just go there and relax, kick back, and have some cabanas and whatever, and you know, and just chill out? No, you don't. You better watch out. All right? And this is what he's saying. You know, and you know, I, my wife and I, we just read something in some of these churches around here that teach down, and I'm not, com, I'm not communicating, uh, you know, judgment against you. That's between you and the Lord God. But they have these, these classes that they teach kids, and as they're going through classes, like the foundation classes of the church, and as they're going through these classes, you see more and more of how they're starting and how they're teaching you. And by the end of the, by the end of the last class that you take that guess what, you don't have any responsibility to do anything. You've given over your will to, to whatever's going on because guess what, God, Jesus is taking care of everything. Let me tell you something, you will miss out on a whole lot of life living like that, all right? A whole lot of responsibility. I've never seen anything that you do not have responsibility for and you're gonna get success in it. I'm not seeing it, not in the natural. So how do you think that the spirit realm is lower than the natural realm? I'm not seeing anything. You go to work, why? Why do you get them to go to work every morning? Huh? You got a job you got to do, Miss Ava. You <laughs> and you got to show up, right? And if you don't show up, what's going to happen? <laughs> just, take, just take three weeks off, William. So I ain't going to do nothing. I'm just going to leave. <laughs> Guess what? Things start crumbling around you. But yet they think that in the body of Christ, they can do that. Jesus has done everything, you know? And so just, just give your will over to emotions, you know, I'm going to like give your will over to emotions? You got to be kidding me. And we got churches, you guys don't realize it, but see, I study these churches around here. We got churches all around here that teach like that, you know? And I'm going like, no, no, that ain't what the word says because the Bible says that those that are led of the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And in order to be led, I has, I've got some responsibility. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> James chapter 4. <laughs> Y'all come on go with me. I'm saying it's, it's sad that people don't look and read for themselves. James chapter 4. Oh boy. Y'all with me? From whence comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust at war in your members? Remember we talked about the flesh the last couple of times? You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and, can, and cannot obtain. You fight in war, and he says, yet you have not because what? You ask not. He says, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you might consume it upon your lust. And then he goes on and he talks and he talks about that. And then verse 7, he says, submit yourselves therefore unto God. See, that's responsibility. Oh, I ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do. Well, good. If that's the way you want to live, I would never change anything in my life. I do it this all over the same way. You got to be crazy to think like that. That I you would never change any. How many of you here? How, how many? How many? How many? How many? How many of you guys in here would love to change some things in your life? That's right. That's called responsibility. Well, guess what? You haven't gotten to more of your life. So if I have that kind of an attitude. I'm willing to change whatever I need to do to make it better because I've learned from my past. But you got people that say, I ain't gonna change, I ain't gonna do this because Jesus did it all. Then guess what? You'll never be any more than you are right now. And you may be less in your future. Hunt somebody say, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Come on, go with me to Psalm 31. <laughs> I'm just trying to teach you guys some things about favor because our Lord gave us grace and truth. And that grace is for this favor and things to attach itself to us as we pursue things. But that truth is also for us to know that this is God's way of doing business. And God ain't gonna change his way of doing business because we feel a certain way. God's way of business is business. You wake up in the desert, you're lost, your car broke down, you know, <laughs> your plane fell in the desert or somewhere, guess what? You get out and you can call on the name of Jesus all you want to. Sun is still going to rise and it's still going to get hot that day. <laughs> are you guys with me? That's right. God's ways don't change. There are things that are already set in order that are not going to change. 
You all saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, on fire. I'm going to jump off this building, Lord, and I'm going to walk out there in the atmosphere. Let me tell you something that's going to happen. You're going to be burning on the ground, all right? Because God's laws are not going to change, okay? Who changes? We do. We line up with God's laws. The sun's going to shine. Get your big umbrella or something if you've got to walk in the desert, you know, to protect yourself from the heat. Guess what? Don't be so foolish and tempt the Lord that you're going to hop off a building, and guess what? God's just going to catch you out in the air, all right? I can tell you right now, it ain't going to happen, and we'll be bringing you some flowers. Psalms 31. <laughs> Oh, boy, I love this one. This is a part of some of the stuff that we were going through for you guys when we were doing the pictures. This is, this is David, and then he's prophetically seeing Jesus, and he's saying things about Jesus. In verse 4, he says, Pull me out of the net that they have laid privately for me, for thou art my strength. He's pursuing favor. See? Pull me out of the net, Lord, that they have laid privately for me, into thine hand I commit my spirit. Remember that's what Jesus said on the cross? He says, Thou hast redeemed me, O, o Lord God of truth. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. I am glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities and hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large place. This is talking about David pursuing favor. He's telling the Lord, and you should always do this, always remind God of what he's already done for you. See? Always give him glory for what he's done because you're submitting yourself to his will, knowing that he's not going to leave you where you are because he's did it in the past. He's delivered you in the past. And is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? I I'm asking you again. So you got you to gotta remind yourself of these things. Is he the same today, was he, is, when you got up this morning, was he like he was yesterday? Then this morning, he's going to be the same tomorrow. Okay, this is, this is, how, this is how you got to think all the time. You got to have this attitude, okay, about this, all right? Psalms 34, 10, since you're right here. Come, 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 because we got to get to a story, one of, these, one of these wonderful stories about these people that received recognition, the favor that gave them recognition, all right? Psalms 34, hey, Mm, verse 10, the young lions do lack, they suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord should not want any good thing. In other words, if you seek in favor, God will open up a door for you. Jesus told us to ask, to knock, what, 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 what? And he said what? And keep on seeking. That's right. He says, ask, knock, and keep on seeking. Why? Because it's a part of our life before God that I'm humbling myself before the Lord so that his available potential can be in my life. See, this is this, this great gift that he just drops on us, you know. I told you God's a God of surprises, all right? And he'll surprise you one day. We go to the book of Job. Everybody used to shout on Job, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. <laughs> That's rightly stated, but it don't mean it is right. See, things can be rightly stated, but it does not mean that they're right. You ever lie? And if somebody repeated your lie, was it rightly stated? <laughs> Come on now, talk with me. All right, you lied, okay? And somebody repeated what you said. It was rightly stated, but it does not mean that it was... Come on now, y'all got to get this stuff. This stuff, this is... These are the things that are laid all out in the Word, man. And people go like, oh, well, you know, the Lord does something. No, 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 no. You got you to gotta, you gotta know what you're talking about. All right? All right, here we go. Job chapter 33. I don't know why I keep going over to 34. What's over in 34? Verse 26. He shall pray unto God, and he will be He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him. All right? Well, how did he get that favor? Because he pursued it. See? He shall pray unto God. That's pursuit. 
all right? And it says, and he shall be favorable unto him. <laughs> and he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto the man his righteousness. See, this is pursuing favor, see? And so when we pursue favor, instead of just talking, just thinking favor is just gonna come on you because it fell on somebody else, you don't know how somebody else pursue God. See, you don't know what they pray. You don't know what they confess all day long. They may tell you, you know, I got a faith confession, this or whatever, you know, and all that's fine. And I have one too. I got one that's 47, 54 minutes, but I have another one that's three pages long, all right? And so you don't know what a person is confessing all day long. They may just get up and say something for 30 seconds, and then guess what? They, they see you over there, and, and your, your fruit basket stand is full every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen this. They see your fruit basket staying full every day. You standing on the side of the road selling all your fruit because your, your fields are constantly bringing fruit. And they pass by, you know, and they got to go up to the other store up there and buy a, a, a bunch of bananas, you know, because they want you to think that they're fruitful too. And so they come back by your fruit stand and, they, and you see their bananas, you think they're fruitful. It don't mean that they're fruitful. But it means that they had to get it from someone else. And your seeds are growing yours. <laughs> All right, so we are going to go to Genesis chapter 13 real quick. Now I'm going to run through these, so y'all got to run with me uh, because time is rolling. And you know how time is. Even if it's a broke clock, it's, it's right twice a day. <laughs> I hear somebody out there laughing. That's right. Even if your clock is broke, it's correct at least twice a day, all right? So thank God for you, what you have until you can get what you really want. This is why we're talking about favor, all right? That husband may be broke twice a day, <laughs> but thank God you got him all those other hours. <laughs> oh, mercy. I see James Taylor looking at me. James, you're not broke twice a day, are you? <laughs> Woo. All right, Genesis chapter 13, here we go. We're talking about favor that brings recognition. Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him in the south, into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and gold. Somebody said, praise God, sounds like me. See, that's your inheritance in the earth. Abraham is our father of faith, so guess what? Jesus came through the lineage of Abraham, and he came through the lineage of David. So guess what, he has the right to rule the land and he has the right to, guess what, own the land. That's what you and I have, the right. That's our heritage in the Lord, to, to own the land and to rule the land, okay? And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and gold and he went on his journeys from the south into Bethel unto the place where his tent had been in, at the beginning between Bethel and, and hey, 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 hi. And unto the, unto the altar, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at first. And there Abram uh, called on the name of the Lord. Lot also went with him, went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And it says, and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was so great uh, so that they could not dwell together. Now we see that with Abraham, and this is David, because I told you I, I love these things about David. You see with Abraham, that Abraham had so much favor on him just like David had. Remember what the psalm says? My cup runneth over. <laughs> so if I'm sitting at the table and my cup's running over, anyone else sitting at the table, they're going to get wet. So, so we see here that because of the favor that was on Abraham, or Abram at the time because his name hadn't been changed, all right, we see the favor that was on him Lot was under the cup. And because Lot was under the cup, Lot got recognized as well as Abraham did. Because Abraham's favor caused Lot to be recognized. I hope y'all getting this. All right? Abraham's favor was so great that it was pouring out on anyone that was around him. All right? Even his servants, all right? And it says that there were... 218 of his servants that went to war 
and defeated kings and not one of them got killed. That's favor. See, that's favor that needs to be recognized. That even though I can go into the fight, it says that David fought, I think it was 30 some wars or 50 some wars, and he never lost a man in a fight. See, these are the, these are the things that favor do for us. Somebody say, I'm under the cup. <laughs> I certainly hope you're under the cup this year because I already told you this is going to be a year of excitement, all right? And when you're under the cup and the cup is running over, can you just imagine, you know, that you're sitting there going like, well, let me get a spoonful. No, 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 no. You don't need no spoonful. Get no spoonful. Let me get a spoonful. Let me sip it. No, 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 no. You better go find you a big old pail because you, you don't know how long that cup's going to run. Remember that lady, that widow with, the, with those vessels and those boys kept pouring out? And as long as they poured out, it kept running over. Well, this is the way the cup is a favor, I'm telling you guys. And Lot was under to the point that, guess what? He didn't have no promise from God, but because he was under the cup, all right? Everything that poured out on Abraham, God gives more than enough. As he says in Ephesians, he gives more than we could ask or think. So guess what? As God was giving to Abraham, Lot was just sitting there going, oh boy, oh boy. Boy, when I get back home. <laughs> he never made it though. Because <laughs> he was always, he was not thinking about where he was going, he was always thinking about what he could get. See, his name is not over there in the book of the Hall of Fame. In Hebrews 11, it says that Abraham and Sarah did not, were not tempted to go back home because their focus was so far on what they were going to, not on what they had come from. So they didn't even have a temptation to return, okay? No matter what God was doing with them, they, I'm not going back there because I got somewhere that God want to carry me to. And you got to have that kind of mindset when it comes to favor, all right, that you're going somewhere with God. Again, it's a gift. It's an attitude, okay, that God gives. And so God had his attitude. He shows his attitude on Abram. When he left, he didn't have all of this. But guess what? As he's progressively going in the things of God, and sometimes you, you want to be there like A, B, C, and you want D tomorrow, like microwave. God don't do a lot of things like that. See, he doesn't heal everybody instantly. There are people that we show in the scriptures. There are people that he healed instantly, but then there are people that he'll heal progressively, all right? Because it's according to what you can hold on to. See, if you're not prepared, all right, for the cup to pour over on you, and guess what? You're going to be standing there again like with a spoon. Or you're going to be standing there with your finger. You guys know how you always put your finger in your mama's things when she made the cakes and stuff? You stick your finger in there and taste the batter. That's what you're going to be doing under the cup. You're going to be sticking your finger on all of that favor that's dropping off all over the cup. And you're going to be sticking your finger in there and tasting like, what, what does it taste like? You don't want to be like that when God's pouring out favor on you. You want to be just like Lot. You want to get all that you can get. Now, even though his mindset and his purpose was different from Abraham's, but guess what? Yours should not be because now you have Christ who's the greater one living on the inside of you. So you should have the God kind of purposes in your heart now. You guys with me? Yes. All right. So you should have those things. Well, we're in Genesis. Let's go to uh, Genesis 41. We know this one about, about uh, Joseph. Oh, man, I'm going to be out of time in a minute. Y'all hurry up. <laughs> Y'all hurry up. All right. In Genesis chapter 41, and you guys can read this. Where it talks about Pharaoh, verse 15, all through, where he had a dream. He dreamed two dreams. And so they bring Joseph, verse 16, and Joseph answered, and he says, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer. All right? And then, you know, back and forth, Joseph is talking to Pharaoh. In verse 25, it says, and Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he's about to do. All right? That's what dreams come to do. They prepare you for certain things, all right? And it says uh, seven, you know, he went on telling him about the seven, this and the seven, that. They're going to have seven years of plenty, seven years of whatever. You know, and again, he says in verse 28, what God is about to do, he showed Pharaoh. And then, guess what? He keeps on talking about the dreams, and he keeps on, and then Pharaoh says this, verse, 20, verse 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. What thing? He's solving a problem. See, when you learn to solve problems for people, you're going to gain 
favor. And that favor is going to be recognized as you were able to do something. All right? It says, the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? That's what they're going to say. He's recognizing where his favor is coming from. See? He's recognizing who's fixing the problem. All right? Aren't you a man of God? The Spirit of God living in you? Uh, can I get some of you out there to tell me the Spirit of God is living in you? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as you. See, he's recognizing favor. He's recognizing the favor that's on Joseph's life. All right? And again, again, as we said, favor that brings recognition. See, I recognize it, and then it brings more recognition to you. See, he recognized this. Pharaoh said this, Thou shalt be over my house. Say what? Bring in more recognition. Here's a man over Pharaoh's house. Ain't nobody appointed over Pharaoh's house but Pharaoh. <laughs> Ooh, I see some of y'all looking at me. I'm gone somewhere now. All right. Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word. Whose word? See, he's recognizing favor. And that recognition is given more, see, honor to that favor. Thy word shall all my people over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Say what? So Pharaoh is saying, if I'm at home, you the boss. <laughs> this is what he's saying. He's saying, if, if I'm at home, you the boss because you're the head over my house. But when I'm here, I'm the man. <laughs> Y'all watched and stopped twice tonight, hadn't it? <laughs> Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I've set thee over all the land of Egypt. All the land. In other words, everybody now is going to recognize and not only were you, you have favor of God because his name was, how would you pronounce it, J.B.? Hmm, something, Epiphanatha, Zapanatha, something, something like that. I don't want to mess it up because somebody out there know Hebrew, they'd be going like laughing. But, <laughs> but, he, but, he, but not only is, is you got favor with God, but now all the land is going to recognize that you have favor with me. See? See, favor that brings recognition. This is the powerful part that we need to, again, pursue because this is not just ordinary favor. You know, this is favor that God is involved in giving you an attitudinal gift from himself that you're going to be more than what you think you are and you're going to get what you deserve. See? And so he's working out what Joseph deserved here because he'd given him a promise in a dream. Remember when he showed him? The sheaves falling before him, the stars and the moon and everything. He showed him that the natural things in and, and, and this world, these things are going to bow to you. And they did. It says this in verse 44. Pharaoh said to Joseph, you know, he put that chain of gold around his neck and all that. You know how much gold worth now? What that chain would be worth? Every, every robber in the, in the nation of Egypt would run after Joseph and take that chain off his neck. <laughs> Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without me, without thee, shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land. Say what? He's given this young boy total control over everything and everybody in the land, even himself, except when he's in the throne. See, this is the way favor is. And because he did that, God brought favor into his life because, again, he qualified for favor by giving favor. Ah, dee -da -dee -da -dee. Verse 46. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. In other words, 
He had a visa. <laughs> there no, there no, the no neighborhood, no, no city, no anything could hinder him from entering in, staying and leaving. He was there as much and as long as he wanted to. He could travel at his own leisure. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to travel? One day we will. See, this is a representation, a parallel of Jesus. One day we will travel at the leisure of our eternal past. You'll be able to go where you want to go, and ain't nobody going to stop you, and ain't nobody going to check your bags. <laughs> I remember when I got a pull, flew into London one time, man, as soon as I got in, as soon as we walked into the, to the airport, man, these two security guards came and grabbed my bag. I was going like, what in the world? I just got here. I'm going back to America. <laughs> <laughs> And these guys are searching, man, because somebody, some crazy clown walked in the day before with a, a grenade in his bag. And I'm going like, you got to be kidding me, you know. But we got to stop because it's time, you know. I know you guys don't even look at your clocks because you, you're, you're listening and you're getting everything in. But this week, think about this because we, we're coming back into this. Think about God giving you favor that's beyond just you, somebody buying you a cup of coffee you know, buying your sandwich, the favor that's going to change your life. You know, uh, Sunday, bring your umbrellas uh, because one moment of favor can change your whole financial state. Just one moment, not a day, no, 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 no. Just one moment can transfer wealth and everything else that you need in life from some resource into your life in just a moment. I would tell you where it all is, but y'all be looking at y'all won't be excited Sunday. I want y'all guys to be on a cliffhanger Sunday when you come in like, oh. all right, God bless you. Thank you guys out there for being with us tonight. I pray that uh, you pursue favor. Uh, we're just, just getting into this. It's a very interesting subject. It's a big eye opener. Uh, it's a heart throbber, okay? And it's a gateway into excitement. That's right. And so we pray that you take the steps, get you a new pair of shoes so that you can walk on some new ground. And let's not limit God. Let's see what we are actually capable of being able to become and do through God's mighty hand. Amen. We'll see you here Sunday. Thank you for joining us again. I'm Apostle Chastine Rock, along with all the leaders and the members of this house. God bless you. May the favor of God rest on you. For the Lord will withhold no good from those who walk uprightly before him. And I believe that's you. Amen. Have a blessed night.